go, let's, if you please open jump up and let's go do one. Um, so if you'll get into jump, what I'd like you to do is go to the help window, go down into their sample data library and grab uh, body fat, percent body fat. I think it's just called body fat. Yeah, body fat. And then bring that up. It's already partitioned. Okay, so someone did a pre-partition on this particular data set. So what this data set is, is we're trying to predict percent body fat. And we've got all these sorts of things like me arm measurements and neck measurements and weight and height and uh, all sorts of different things. And so now let's go build a model. So when you're doing an MLR, go to Analyze, go to Fit Model. And then if we look at this, our percent body fat is a continuous variable. So that's OK. So we're going to put that up in our outcome variable. Our validation data is going to go into our validation. All right? Yeah. It's under the help menu under example data set, sample data sets. It's called body fat. And then we take everything except the formulas. This formulas is where someone's already done some work on this data and it's saved the formulas. So don't, don't put that in the model. Someone tried to solve this one about 10 different ways. And that's okay. They were doing their homework. They were seeing, and then the rest of these things are gonna go into these model effects. So we're gonna add everything else down here in the model effects. You'll notice up here, because our outcome variable was a continuous variable, it picked standard least, squ standard least squares. Later on, if we have an, a, a categorical outcome variable, and this will be logistic regression. So it looked at our outcome variable data type and said, oh, oh, that's a number. So he must want to do partial least squares, standard least uh, squares, which is just multiple linear regression. Then we run this, okay? And it shows us some th in things. What it shows us up here is it, plot, it plots the percent body fat predicted versus the percent that it estimated. And because those are all in a corridor, that means it was pretty good. The, if the predicted versus the actual, when you predict it, it kind of goes in this nice corridor, our estimates are pretty good. If we had a lot of big scatter off of that diagonal, that sh that's estimates not being as good. It shows you that these are statistically significant. So from weight up, these are statistically significant and these aren't, okay? It looks like abdomen circumference is the biggest predictor. That's not a big surprise given that we're looking at percent body fat, people that have bigger tummies. It's showing up here and bigger forearms and things like that. Uh, and then if we go down here, under parameter estimates, un unfold that, and that will show your beta coefficients. So those are our estimates of our, our betas, our, our, our slopes. Those are our slopes right there. And you can see some are statistically significant. And, so, and then you can also see our root mean squared error. Remember, we use race instead of root mean squared error. So this is the one not, we're using, not the root mean squared error that's up there. This is root mean squared error for us. So we're within 4.8% body fat, which is not bad, not bad at all, really. Uh, and so that's where and we're getting an R squared of 0.69. Uh, and so we're doing OK, but I you always wish that that could be a little higher and this could be a little bit lower, but you know, we're doing OK. Now, what I would do next here is I would take the non-significance and I'd throw them out and see if I do as well. Uh, and if so, I'd be happy that my simpler model is doing as well or better. Yeah, just like we talked about a minute ago. Yeah, that making sense? So your homework will have you do a couple of these and interpret them. So remember, don't just run the models. Think about what those coefficients mean. Think like the model. Think that what's y equals the, 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 uh, slo or the intercept plus this slope times that value of x plus this slope times that value of x. And just you know, get, get in the practice of thinking and interpreting what all that stuff means. OK? All right, we're out of time. Thank you for your great attention. Did you have, yeah. Yeah, so for our homework it says, what is like the first row of data with the outcome of the regular residual on the first row? Yeah. How do you see the score? Oh. Yeah, how do you Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're right. This is going to be worth knowing. Thank you. Thank you. So once you've got your, once you've got your model built, then what you can do is you can, um, you can actually go out and you can predict, you can predict the model. Let's see, where is it here? Save columns. Under save columns, it will let you, it will let you save the predicted values. 
and the residuals. So his question was, gee, I, I, you ask us on the homework, what's the error and what's you know, on that first one? You go save columns and then predicted values and it will just, and let's just do it. So I'm gonna select predicted values and now it, it's got my predicted percentage right there. So those are my, that's my predicted values right there. Now, and our actual is over here. Gotta scroll over it a little bit. So, so basically, we can, you can look at your predicted and your actuals and see how far off you are. So this one, it predicted 42% and the actual was 35%. So our error was the difference, yeah? And it, it just does it. And so if you wanna save the residuals, you can. Thank, thank you for that question. 